Hey now folks, today we are taking a look at Caverns of Roxor, which is the first big expansion for Super Dungeon Explorer. Now if you watched my review of Super Dungeon Explorer, you, and by mere fact that I'm actually reviewing an expansion for it, you know that I like the game a lot. Uh, it's a miniatures game where you're hacking and slashing your way through a dungeon. One player is the overlord called the console. The other players are the heroes. You have multiple players playing multiple heroes and so on. Uh, and your heroes are trying to kill the uh, final boss of the console's dungeon, and the console is trying to wipe out the heroes with hordes of minions and bosses and mini-bosses. Caverns of Roxor adds new monsters and a new boss and mini-boss to this game. Uh, in this case, the new boss is the titular Roxor, uh, and he's got a new troll mini-boss uh, mini along for the ride, and a lot of two different uh, broad categories of enemies, fire-based enemies and uh, I believe they're called the Fireflow Denizens, which you can actually buy in a separate expansion if you want a smaller expansion. And then the Rock Top Gang, which is another smaller expansion you can buy as well, but they're all in this box. And the Rock Top Gang, uh, the, the Fireflow Denizens are actually a bunch of like fire gels and fire hounds and things like that. And the Rock Top Gang are these turtle type creatures. And again, everything in this game is all like vague video game references. So all the turtles look like sort of like the Koopas from the Mario Brothers and all the different uh, oozes look like sort of the uh, Dragon Quest or uh, Dragon Warrior type creatures. And of course, it wouldn't be Super Dungeon Explorer without some new heroes, and this expansion comes with three of them. Uh, you have a hero that looks sort of like Link, you've got a hero that sort of looks like Princess Peach, and one that sort of kind of looks like Steampunk Mario. Anyways, this is Super Dungeon Explorer, this is what it does, it makes a lot of video game references. Uh, we're going to go over a quick overview of just the different components, not the rules of the game itself, just the new uh, components in the expansion, and then we'll come back and I'll give you my opinion of it. This is not going to be a comprehensive overview of the rules of Super Dungeon Explorer. If you're watching this video, I'm assuming that you already know about the base game. If not, you can always download the rules uh, from Soda Pop's official website. Rock Wars Cavern is a new expansion that basically has characters themed after either uh, a bunch of like fire levels from video games or the many types of turtle enemies that show up in games like Super Mario Brothers. Uh, and the big boss is some giant fire elemental thing that I'm not really sure what he's supposed to be from, but we'll get to that in a moment. First things first, we're going to go over the new heroes because that's what everyone always wants to see first. Uh, first we have a... Uh, Princess Ruby, who is obviously supposed to be an homage to Princess Peach, I think. Uh, yes, for sure. <laughs> There's no think about it. Uh, but anyways, she is definitely sort of the healer and buffer of this group of heroes. She can uh, give someone plus to attack, plus to will. She can heal. Um, her potion ability lets her get rid of a root or relic card to immediately draw another, which is actually pretty cool. So definitely more of a support character, but uh, the game actually needed more of those in my opinion. Uh, then we have a character who is clearly an homage to Link, and that is the Deep Root Scout. Uh, here's his character card. Um, he has abilities like Boomerang, Hookshot, so yeah, they're not even trying to uh, hide the fact that he's an homage to Link. But uh, Bow, Acorn Grenade... Sprite Syrup, which is, uh, I hear you have to ground up a fairy to make the Sprite Syrup. It's very horrifying, but in any event, uh, there's different stats. He's a pretty well-balanced character with some really cool art uh, and really cool miniature. And then you have the Star Guild Sapper, who I'm guessing is supposed to be like Mario, but like a very, very weird alternate steampunk version of Mario. Uh, you got the Astral Hammer, uh, Star Shine ability, which makes him immune to status effects, and his potion uh, makes uh, all non-special attacks made by the affected hero gain range 8 fire. So lots of fire themes going throughout this game. And here is his miniature. Uh, be careful with this one because the hammer can bend very easily. You don't want that to break. Now, on to the different types of enemies, which is actually some people's favorite thing in the game, I suppose. Uh, we'll start with the rock pile spawn point enemies. Here's the, the rock pile, which had like this cool rune stone on it. You've got two of those. And uh, here's the card for the rock pile. And it summons crusher, bombardiers, rollers, and slow pokes. Now, these are the turtle themed enemies that I mentioned. Uh, we'll actually start with the slow pokes, who are these here, which. It's pretty interesting. They actually use two different sculpts for the same enemy. Uh, you have this sculpt here. This is one of the turtles. And here's the other one for 
the slow poke. Now, first things first, I want to mention about these is that all of the different turtles, um, including the most powerful of the turtle, uh, or no, I'm sorry, I take it back. Uh, the most powerful of the turtle enemies does not have this ability, but all of the rest of them do. And that is basically just a power called turtle, which they can either activate as an action on their turn, or they can activate immediately upon being attacked. And that basically lets them turn into a shell. They go into their shell, their defense increases by one, they cannot, be, uh, they become immune to status effects, and uh, basically just make themselves very annoying to the heroes. Uh, and in fact, the roller enemies, who are these enemies back here, can actually take those shells and fling them around the battlefield, which I just think is one of the coolest, most thematic things ever. Uh, here's the roller card right here. You've got the thwack ability, as you see, and they all, uh, most of the turtles of enemies have that turtle ability there, which is explained on the back of all the cards. Um, so there's all the different, uh, those again are the slow pokes. Um, another one of the rollers. And then you have the bombardiers who are pretty cool because they actually shoot out giant cannons. Again, like some of the Mario Brothers games, I think there was enemies like that. Um, this is one of the few things in the game, in the expansion, that you actually have to glue on are these handles here. Um, because it just, I guess it would have had the potential to break off in transit. Um, and then finally, the biggest baddest of the turtle enemies is the Crusher, of course, who looks super duper cool. I certainly uh, would hate to see this thing barreling down on me. But he's got basically like an earthquake type attack and is naturally immune to status effects. He doesn't need to turtle in order to activate that ability. Uh, here is his card, in fact. So those are the turtle enemies. Now the other type of spawn point, and I in pretty much the base game and the other two main expansions, there's always the somewhat weaker uh, more plentiful type of enemies, which in this case were the turtles that have two spawn points. And there's always another type of enemy that is a little bit more powerful overall, has less models and only one spawn point. And those are the ones that are brought out by the Lava World, which is this spawn point here. And there's the card. And it brings out the Blaze Beetle, the Ember Hounds, the Burning Gels, and the Fire Gels. So let's show a few of those. These are the Fire Gels, which are these little slime type things here. Uh, and here's their card. Doesn't actually look much like the model, but nevertheless, they're the weakest type of enemy coming out of that spawn point. And then you have their bigger brothers, which are the burning gels, which again, all of these things do fire, which can be very, very nasty. Being caught on fire is not fun by any stretch of the imagination. And here's their model. Pretty cool. And then you have the ember hounds, which, uh, you know, I'm partial to dogs. I don't really like them when they're trying to kill my hero, but still I'll give them a pass on that. They're just doing their job. Uh, there they are, pretty cool model. I like the head. They have, do have a tendency to fall forward on the board a lot, but you can only do so much with models. And finally, the big baddie of the Lava World spawn point is the Blaze Beetle. Uh, this is another one of the few models in the expansion that you're going to have to actually uh, glue things on. You have to glue these like fire, the fire coming out of his head and out of his mouth, if I remember correctly. But really, really super cool model. Definitely uh, stands out amongst all of the other ones. But the two baddest models of the game, if not the most impressive, are the mini boss, who is Rock Gut, who is a fire troll, which, if you know anything about trolls from DD, is uh, ironic in at least some level since fire is usually the only weakness of trolls. And here he is here. Pretty cool. Lots and lots of detail there. They do a really great job on these miniatures. And the biggest, baddest boss of the entire expansion. In fact, he is the boss, and that is Roxor. And I'm still not entirely sure what he's supposed to be. Some sort of elemental totem type creature. But he's got lots of nasty stats, lots of health, uh, really bad attack. Um, he can uh, change his form, become a volcano, riddle of steel. Uh, really, really nasty stuff. And he's, when he's in his different forms, he gets either more armor, more attack, becomes immune to status effects. So he's actually more versatile than the other bosses. And there's his miniature, which is just crazy looking. Uh, and here is his, of course, card that explains all the different dungeon effects and the special effects that he has going on. And of course, there is special treasure that only enters into the treasure deck when you're using Roxor as a boss. You have Rumble and Ruckus, which increases your attack and gives you the Earthquake-type strike that the Crusher had, uh, the Tremor strike. Uh, you have Wobbling Stalactite, which is plus one to 
dex and lets you use it as a missile eight with stun ability you have fire gel goo which uh, lets you do a fire attack and increases your will uh, grimy grim granite greaves which just increase your armor but uh, makes you immune to knockdown immune to slow immune to immobile which is probably the best thing about that equipment uh, Roxor's Bane, which has cold and gives you attack and armor plus one. That's really, really cool. And Fool's Gold. At the end of each of this model's activations, draw one loot card. Anytime this model makes a roll using its will attribute, discard the highest result instead, uh, the highest result rolled. So good and bad there, I suppose. But that's basically Roxor's Cavern. It completely replaces the monsters from the other game, although you could mix and match them as you choose. Use one of the spawn points with the... Uh, accompanying monsters together with the ones from the base game or with other future expansions that's your choice that's super dungeon explorer rock source cavern let's go back to my final opinion now it would have taken a lot for soda pop miniatures to screw up this expansion because this is one of those games where i just want more i wasn't really looking for them to change the entire dynamic of the game just give me more miniatures new heroes uh and just uh more and more variety and I would have been happy. And that is the case. I mean, there's a lot of variety here, of uh, the new type of monsters, new heroes that you have. So overall, this is great, and I'm happy that they have it because it just adds needed variety to the game. If you've played it a lot, then you're gonna want more variety in the type of stuff that you have to face and the heroes you have access to. Having said that, some things in this expansion are better than others. My absolute favorite part of the expansion is the Rock Top Gang love them they're so cool not only are the skulls themselves cool but their abilities their ability to turn into turtle shells and then have some of the bigger turtles throw those turtle shells around into enemies that is just so cool and fun it's one of the most thematic things i've ever seen not just in this game but in any game so i would make the argument that this expansion is worth it just for them i mean you could buy them separately too but you might as well if you're going to go go for this expansion and get all the other stuff with it as well the fire flow denizens enemies, the the fire gels and the you know the beetle and the hounds, again all the models in this game. Let, let's take a step back. All the components in this game in the expansion are cool, and even more importantly, you do not have to assemble them. Unlike the first base game, you do not have to assemble any of these models. Um, there's a okay, a couple of exceptions. You have to put a, some small little pieces on some of the bigger models with sticking out parts, like the bombardiers and the the, uh, the blaze beetle but other than that all of them are combined including the heroes so good stuff there but okay now going back the fire flow denizens um, even though the models look just as good as all the rest of them character wise they're not that interesting yeah, they do a lot of fire okay um, you know it, you know I would just sort of put them comparable to the dragons uh, right down to the fact that they only have one spawn point and there's not as many models. I mean, to the, the egg clutch and the dragons and the dragon whelps and the hatchings that spawn from the base game. So, eh, it's okay, whatever. The, the turtles are where it's at. Those are the most interesting enemies in here. Uh, the big boss, Roxor, uh, again, I kind of don't know what he is. He's like some sort of elemental fire demon dude. Um, he's got some cool abilities and the fact that he can switch forms and turn into like a volcano and he can give himself more attack or more defense and that's all cool mechanically thematic so I guess with him he's okay mechanically but thematically he just does, doesn't work for me same thing with the fire troll I would probably much rather use the ogres from the base game or mini bosses from other expansions I haven't talked about yet um, but okay let's talk about the heroes because most people are interested in just the heroes of Super Dungeon Explorer since that's what most of the players in the game are going to be controlling uh, they're okay I think that I appreciated the fact that they were going for the, the reach and making one of the characters look like Link, right down to the fact that he has hookshot abilities and arrow abilities, things like that. But uh, I think that you have the Paladin from the first game and you have other knight type characters. So he's, you know, this character that the, was the Deep Root Scout, not as interesting to me. Cool model though. Um, Princess Ruby's okay. You know, I think the game needed more support characters or the option of having more support characters for people to choose from. Uh, so she's cool and you can actually buy her individually as well if, if they're in stock uh, but uh, not really setting the world on fire there and I would say that the the sapper the guy with the hammer is supposed to be like Mario probably the least interesting character I probably would never willingly choose to play him just because thematically I don't like him uh, he doesn't really have any abilities that in my mind make him stand out that much but other people might disagree but uh, and this this is a very thematic game and henceforth if a a character or monster doesn't appeal to me right away, I'm not going to use it. That's just how I am. But 
But so I have some gripes, uh, but overall, this is a great expansion. I love that they decided to actually put the uh, components in pre-assembled, so you don't have to worry about gluing them all together except for a couple little bits. Um, I think that there's a great variety of enemies here. I love the turtles. Uh, it's always great to have more heroes, even if they're not the mo best, most interesting heroes in the world. But uh, this is how you should do an expansion for this type of game, for sure. And I think Soda Pop did a great job here. So Caverns of Rock Store, if you have Super Dungeon Explorer and you like it, or you know have a friend who uh, you're trying to get a gift for that loves Super Dungeon Explorer, definitely a must buy. Uh, my name is Nick, this has been Board Game Brawl, and I'm reminding you to get out there and game every day and every way. Take care.